Well, we've made it to the halfway point of the season and things aren't going disastrously badly. I don't want to tempt fate, but we're looking okay for a lower mid-table finish at the moment. And we've celebrated by bringing in a couple more players. Hello and welcome to part 119 of It's Coming Home. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have Premier League games away against Zinedine Zidane's Bournemouth and Fulham as well. But Zidane's managing all the top teams in non-league to legend. He's a regular nemesis of mine. It seems like in this universe, his career took a bit of a turn. Although having said that, I mean, he's not done too badly. Real Madrid, Tottenham, Napoli, Liverpool, Real Madrid and then Bournemouth. A Bournemouth just like a super team in this world. Because I assumed this was going to be a relatively simple... No, they're a good side. They're a well-established European qualifying level Premier League side. Who also raided Stoke when they got relegated, apparently. Because that's where Phil Foden was hanging out, if I recall. And because that's why we got to sign Nick Moss. See? I'm not the only one who raided Stoke. Exactly. Right, I did mention I have done some transfers, though. No more from Stoke, just a couple more players coming in. First one is Radomir Bogdan, a 21-year-old Serbian under-21 international central midfielder, uh, can play as all the different types of playmaker. We're actually having a bit of a blast from the past and using him as a roaming playmaker, which I haven't used in... I don't think I've used a roaming playmaker in FM19, but it did even lead me to use a 4-3-1-2 for a couple of games with him on the right-hand side as a roaming playmaker. This is... We're going to, like, FM16 vintage... Um, but three-star current ability, five-star potential ability. Um, he's going to be a very good player. Another one, another youngster we've brought in who's good enough to be in the team now, but he's only going to get better and better and better and better. So we'll either sell him on for a profit or he'll make our team much better. And in a similar mould, Zan Horvat is a second choice. Well, not not a second choice goalkeeper, a second good goalkeeper for us to have. Uh, two in, Two international appearances for Slovenia already. Three and a half star current ability, which puts him level with Boyle um, and four star potential ability. So again, should end up better than Boyle, which is awesome. We've not sold anybody. Just a few more have gone out on loan, including two of the goalkeepers we panic bought and then never played. Um, so let's get into... Have I shown you how we've been doing since you were last with me? I don't think I have. Um, it's been a mad, a mad little spell. Um, I did say we'd want... I think, I think we were looking for nine points from this spell, but I think I included Bournemouth in the spell. And we've come back a game early. And I don't really know why we did. I'm sure Paskev had his reasons. I think it's because Bournemouth and Fulham look more winnable than Fulham and Arsenal. And I wanted to show you us winning a football match. Because it's been a while. We did manage back-to-back -back Premier League wins though against Watford and Wolves. Um, and we've also got through to the fourth round of the FA Cup where we play Bournemouth again. So this is what the Premier League table looks like if it ever loads. So... Uh, 22 games gone. We're in 13th place on 26 points, comfortably ahead of the Kev ratio at the moment. Um, and like I say, looking looking fairly solid to finish around this level. It seems to be where we're settling out. As long as we don't have a spectacularly poor run of form, I'd like to think we might be able to survive this year. We win if we win another five games this season. That that's enough for us to stay up. So hopefully we'll get both of them in today's episode, and that will be splendid. So, this is the team anyway. We've got Boiling Goal, a back four of Sweeney, Turner, Botello and Gregson with Harrison at the base of the midfield, Samuel and Bogdan in central midfield, Manu behind Steer and Matondo. That's right, I am still playing Oli Steer every game despite the fact he's only got two goals all season. I just, I like the way he runs. I think he offers something that neither Matondo or Harris do and that's why they have to take it in turns playing with him. It's not it's not quite as extreme as taking it in turns, but they probably have both played about half the matches each. Uh, Man who's not fully fit today. We have got Duku down on the bench to come on if need be. Lerick Fernandez is starting to get itchy feet because he's not playing regular football. I think he's he's probably gonna he's on the loan list at his own request. We might be in the last days of Lerick Fernandez, which if he does end up moving on, it's a slightly different situation for him than it is for either. Samick Powell or Sir Anthony Harris. Obviously, Powell, uh, Powell and Harris are a little bit older. They're both 29 now. Um, Harris is still playing reasonably regularly. Powell probably is accepting the fact that he's not got time to go and rebuild a career at a lower level. But Eric Fernandez is only 27. If he leaves us now, he could go and have 
a good five, six years, really establishing himself for someone else mid-table in the championship where he'll be an absolute superstar. And I can understand why he's less willing to just see out his career as a squad player here than either of the other two are. Um, Because realistically, he's never going to be a regular starter again. Even if we get relegated, we've got a lot of quality midfielders who we won't sell them all. Some of them are going to stick around if we go down. And I just don't see a situation where Lerick Fernandes is a regular starter ever again. Watch him do a Mick Powell now. Gregson on the overlap on the right-hand side. Weird, weird cross. But Steer picks it up and it's Sweeney. Crosses to Manu and it's just over from Manu. And uh, it it was a good opportunity. We've we've started brightly in this game. Had more possession than them. Same amount of shots. Um, we're slightly edging most of the stats apart from tackles one. That's terrible. What kind of team can only win forty percent of their tackles? That's just awful. We need to we need to get some crunching tackling going on. And they're on the overlap here. We're not even getting the opportunity to tackle. Um, they're just they're just going to score without letting us get into a tackling position. That's a little bit of a worry. They have a whole attack where we don't even get a chance to attempt to tackle them. That's when you know you're in the Premier League. Yikes. Mm. Okay, we're going to pretend that didn't happen. I think that's a good a good juncture to ask for ten minutes of passion. Steer with the cross doesn't find a multicoloured shirt. Uh, Sweeney to Samuel to Manu. Manu plays it into Matondo. Matondo had Gregson as an option, but in the end played it back to Bogdan. Um, and there is Matondo, and Matondo grabs the equaliser almost immediately. Ninth goal of the season for Chadney Matondo. And it's Bournemouth 1, home 1. And games like this, away from home against teams who are a little bit better than us, a draw would be a, a very, very good result. If, I mean, if we drawed every game all season, we'd probably stay up. So a draw is always a good result for a team like us. Um, but... In this situation, a draw is a particularly good result. It's not a game we'd come here expecting to be able to win, although we're not going to be we're not going to be upset if we do end up winning it. If the players are listening, we're not against winning it, but a draw would be lovely. Uh, Botello heads straight into the arms of the Bournemouth keeper from the corner, and the highlights continuing. Something so shenanigans are about to go down. Um, and I guess here is the shenanigans. Bournemouth are in, and we've given away a penalty. We're going over to the little telly, but. I suspect um, a penalty is about to be given because it did just look sloppy. I th- was it Gregson, I think, with a sloppy challenge? Which, I mean, it seems about right. Sweeney, for some reason, over on the right-hand side, I guess because it all came from a corner. So our defence hadn't had the opportunity to get themselves back into their proper positions again. And the referee has given a penalty. Let's hope Boyle can make himself a hero by saving a penalty. Oh, he can! But passes... Uh, just... What's the point of saving a penalty if you're going to push it back out in front of you? You've got to be pushing it around the post, pushing it out to the side. It's just basic goalkeeping. You don't push the ball out back in the direction that it came from because chances are, if you push it back out where it came from, the person who kicked it at you is probably still there, in which case they're going to get another opportunity. And especially when it's a penalty, there's no one around to defend. Matondo's in again, though. Got himself in behind, loses the ball, but it's back with Sweeney. Last attack of the half, probably. And it's Bogdan to Harrison. Back to Bogdan again. He plays it out to Gregson. Gregson with the cross, aimed at Matondo, but he can't quite get there. And now Bournemouth have got a counter-attack on. But in fact, it comes straight back at me again. Um, It's with Bogdan again to Harrison. Back to Bogdan. This is why I like a roaming playmaker. He's all over the place. Probably not great for a defensive shape, but does work well in these attacking moves. Manu with the shot from the edge of the area. Straight into a Bournemouth player. And Gregson should have just let that go out. What on earth is he thinking there? Gregson has just invited them to come and attack us. And that, and I know people will say it wasn't his fault. Absolutely, 100%, that goal is Gregson's fault. What was he thinking? He's the He is the furthest player back on that side of the pitch. Keeps the ball in, but then runs off the pitch himself. Giving them an entire left-hand side of the pitch to attack down. Absolute madness. Botello now inexplicably taking the throw in. Matondo crosses to Sweeney. Sweeney with the shot from range and it's palmed back out again. It comes to Botello again, who's still out wide on the right-hand side. And at 3-1 down, I think we probably have to chalk this one up as one of those games. We're probably going to lose. We're going to lose more games than wins or draws this season because we're not very good. So let's just be underdogs and let's see how we get on in this second half and hopefully pick up some points in the next match. The key is, like I keep saying, and I think I've said it most episodes this season now, the key in situations like this 
is to not go on and get embarrassed. We don't want to go and chase these games. We don't want to. We don't want to force ourselves to lose four, five, six nil, or four, five, six one, uh, because that's going to be massively demotivating. Whereas if we keep them tight, then ah, we just lost to the better team. We're going to do that because we're not very good. Samuel's picked up a knock here, um, so we probably just need to get him off. There's no reason to keep him on in a game like this. Torres can come on for him, and we're now playing a roaming playmaker and a Mazala. Um, I think that's also known as basically no midfield because they're both going to be off doing their own thing. But, you know, it's a time to experiment. Manu, who wasn't fit before the game, he can come off. Duku can come on for him. Um, and then I think probably Sir Anthony Harris as a final change um, because Steer is just having a terrible game. Ollie Steer, bless his cotton socks. I keep I keep persisting with him because he's the highest potential one. Telling myself he's he's a good runner, but... Sooner or later, he's got to start kicking the ball as well. And I think that's where he's going wrong at this level. And I'm, I'm, After giving him a, a full half, a full half a season of Premier League football, starting pretty much match in, match out. An opportunity I've given to very few strikers in the history of this football club. I, I think we probably do have to start thinking in terms of, yeah, Steer probably needs to be loaned out to a championship club. And we'll try it. We'll have another look at him this time next year and... Maybe it's just never quite going to work out for him. And he's going to be one of those players who... Did, I mean, he was great in the Championship, but he's just not scoring goals at this level. And that's always going to be problematic when you've got a striker who's not scoring goals. Especially when you've got two around him in the shape of Harris and Matondo, who are a proven partnership and are both... I mean, they're both closing in on double figures for the season. And considering they've only played in half the games, they're actually scoring at a pretty decent rate. Right, hopefully we keep everyone happy by saying, yeah, you were underdogs, you were supposed to lose, don't worry. And now we kind of do need to go and beat Fulham at home in the next game because we're above them in the league and they're the games we do need to pick up three points if we're going to lose games like that one. Well, boys and girls, we're 119 episodes in. I think you will all forgive me for finally wheeling this one out. We're doing the 4-3-1-2. Oh, doesn't it look like we've got so many very good midfielders now. It just seems wrong not to. We've got Samuel, we've got Torres, we've got Bogdan, we've got Papuchev. Um, we've just got loads of really good midfielders. So we're going to play three of them. And we're going to put Harrison down on the bench um, because Harrison is wanted by a load of... I mean, we're, we're going to get done over by another one of these youngsters going to the MLS. He's out of contract with Man City at the end of the season. I guess there's an argument if we actually plan to keep him long term, we should probably make an offer for him now. Let's make an inquiry. So obviously he's been here five years. We'd, we'd quite like to keep him. But if he does move on, we don't have another defensive midfielder. But we've got a lot of good central midfielders. So this might be the tactic of the future for us. Um, and we're also going to give Horvat a debut today. Uh, because why not? He's been here a while. Um, Boyle wasn't didn't pull up any trees in that last game. So a bit of a, bit of a change to how the team is. I'm still playing Steer. I've got to stop playing Steer. And we're going with Horvat in goal. Back for Sweeney, Turner, Botello and Gregson with Papuchev, Torres and Bogdan in midfield. Manu behind Steer and Matondo. It looks so non -eaten -y. It's not even funny. And I love it. And I hope it works. Obviously, if we get absolutely torn apart, then we'll abandon it immediately because, you know, that's how I do these things. But I do. I have hope that it might just be the the defining moment of the series someone asked in the comments and i am recording like a week in advance at this point because i'm on holiday soon and i'm you don't need to know why i'm just recording well in advance um but someone did say are you planning on finishing the series with the diamond no it's just for however many seasons now it's been the best team the best formation to suit the players that we've got you even saw last season we did try and play a 4-3-1-2 we tried to play a 4-3-3 tried to force it it didn't really work Whereas this has kind of appeared organically. I know it's my favourite formation ever, but it has kind of happened organically because we couldn't find a better defensive midfielder than Harrison. We've got, found lots of very good central midfielders. So it kind of makes sense to, to go with this system. And there's one of them scoring right up front there. Goran Papuchev, first ever goal for the club. And it's an absolute stunner. Would he have scored it if he was playing on the left-hand side of a two? Probably not. Because quite apart from anything else, he probably wouldn't be playing because he hasn't really been playing very much. So the fact that we've done the three in there has got him on the pitch. He's scored a goal. We're 1-0 up against Fulham. And as things stand, 
That puts us up to 29 points with 14 games still to play. The target is 40. I, I, I like those odds. I like our chances of staying up if things stay as they are. Papuchev to Torres. Back to Papuchev to Manu. Manu back to Papuchev again, who scored again. He likes his system. It works. We're doing a 4-3-1-2 forever. Bye-bye defensive midfielders. Harrison, you can go off to the MLS with my blessing. Say hello to the turd and to Rogers while you're there. But, uh, yeah, we don't need you anymore. We're doing a 4-3-1-2. And we're going to win the Champions League with it. We're going to win the Champions League this year with it. We're going to be European champions with home before we are with Sevilla, probably. I mean, that, that is probably true. Um, right, we do need to perhaps not get too carried away. Um, because the one issue with this system is that it always used to be a little bit <laughs> a little bit wobbly defensively. I might have to go back and study some of the tapes. For, did we, I thought we'd conceded a goal there, but it was obviously disallowed by the little telly man. Um, we might have to go back. Oh, that's poor from Turner. And what a save from Horvat. That, that was outstanding. For the third time of attempting this sentence, um, we need to go back and review the tapes from the Neaton because I need to see what our fullbacks were up to. Because I know with us doing the diamond, we've always had these really, really attacking, aggressive fullbacks. And we've left them on those attacking instructions for today. But obviously, we don't have that central midfielder dropping back between the two centre backs. So I think we probably need to get the fullbacks to just ease off a little bit. But I need—I want to see how we did it last year with Nuneaton because it worked so brilliantly with them. Let's just replicate the system completely. Because that. I hear that's the thing to do. Oh, you had a system that worked with a different team in a different version of the game. Wait six months into the new game, pick a completely different team with different players and just replicate that system exactly and it'll work. I mean, that's football manager basics, isn't it? I think it is. Um, of course, if Horvat's as good as that one save made him look, then we don't need to worry about the defence because we've got a superstar keeper. Another good save from Horvat. He's not keeping hold of them. But I like the fact that he's pushing him out for corners rather than pushing him into the path of the opposition. Boyle annoyed me when he did that. And Horvat, I think that's the one thing he's clung on to. He's heard that and he's building his entire home goalkeeping career around pushing the ball around the post, which it's a welcome change and I could get on board with it. Um, we've played very well in this first half, although looking at the stats, Fulham have had the better of the game. They've had better chances, more of them, more possession. Um, we're just we've just been prolific, which is not like us at all. It looks like Fulham have still got Setignon in their team, which seems unlikely. But we'll have a little look at that in a second. They've also got a Perby knocking around. I don't know if it's um, I don't know if it's one of the famous Perbys who we had in non league to legend. It's a lot of Perbys in Football Manager this year. I'm assuming Setignon has gone back to Fulham, and he's not stayed there all the way through the save because that seems unlikely. But I'm so intrigued. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna click on him and find out, which is always a bad idea. Um, you might be winning. Things could still change if you let your performance levels drop. Happy with that. I just want to have a look at their team. Um, where is he? Ryan Sessignon must have gone back to Fulham. No, he's played his entire career at Fulham. 542 games for them, whilst picking up 37 England caps, and he never left. Still only 31. Fulham must be. Must be quite the team in this world. They never got relegated from the Premier League in the home universe. Well, we know that wasn't the case in non league to legend this year because I had to go and save them from the bottom half of the championship. And I'm pretty confident it wasn't the case in real life either. I don't have my map of the Premier League to hand, so I can't double check. But I'm pretty sure they got relegated. Uh, but obviously in this universe, they didn't. And they're full of per buys, And they've still got Ryan Sessignon. And now they've scored a goal created by him because I clicked on him I've ruined it all by clicking on a player's name we know we shouldn't do that I don't want to look at the replay hopefully we'll cancel out the clicking on him by not watching the replay of the goal that he was involved in that I think that's logical and um, they're coming at us again I'm a little bit worried looking at these stats that two good finishes two good long-range efforts might be papering over the cracks with this system that I've proclaimed the second coming of Nuneaton um, I'm going to praise us which seems risky because we're not playing particularly well. But we are ahead. Um, right, Ollie Steer, as usual, is going to come off and bring Harris on for him. Drop you but No, why are you going to support Mr. Matondo? That's not what we do. A complete forward on attack. Matondo also not playing particularly well, but 
the only striker we've got on the bench is Delhi Stevenson, who does have potential to get better, but I don't feel like this is the sort of game to bring him on in. So we're not going to make a second change to our strikers. What else? Could we, Torres isn't having the best of games. Gregson isn't either. We don't. We certainly don't have a right back on the bench. We could bring Lerick Fernandez on to play in midfield. Papuchev can go there. Fernandez hasn't been asked to play as a box to box midfielder for a while. In fact, I'm still not going to ask him because he really can't do it at all anymore. But he can be a Mazala. We don't want two Mazalas though. So I want you to be a Roman playmaker, which means you are going to have to be a ball winning. No, just, uh, just be a central midfielder. There's no defensive player in there. So I'm going to drop these two back a bit. I'm doing tactics on the fly here. This feels uncomfortable. You're watching me and judging me. Don't look at my tactics. Oh, I'm protective of them. Um, Bogdan could probably come off as well. We have got Harrison on the bench. I think the sensible thing to do in this situation probably is to bring Harrison on and actually go back to the system that we know works. Do that. And then you can do that if you want. And that's fine. But li I might leave them back on support. Oh, it's begun. I've withdrawn my fullback slightly. Do I praise them? Or is it too risky at this stage? We've just got to hold on just for a little bit longer. Come on, lads. Hold on. This is a big win if we can pull this off. Because they're a team that are just below us in the league. And we have beaten them here at Stadium MK. Right smack bang in the middle of home. That was a real Jekyll. Yeah, it was a Jekyll and Hyde performance. It was good until I noticed it wasn't. And then I broke it. Right. Let's let's see who when we're going to be back. I think we're probably going to have a couple more matches this season, unless we have a couple more matches, a couple more episodes this season, unless we end up on an FA Cup run, which seems unlikely. So we'll probably come back somewhere around Everton, Burnley, Leeds, Tottenham, somewhere around there, and then back for the end of the season. Obviously, if we get dragged into a relegation battle, I'll show you a little bit more. If we go on a cup run, I'll show you a little bit more. But if it's just going to be mid-table obscurity, we don't need to dwell too much on that. We want to get back onto the transfer window and uh, see what's what as we approach next season. I'm feeling positive. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.